Hey, hello everybody, Melokit Technique here with you. I know it's been a while since last time I made a video about, um, you know, a particular aria. In this case, uh, I'm talking about um, the Cavatina from Faust. Uh, Salut de mes rechastes pure. Okay, now why do I bring this, this aria or, or this Cavatina? Uh, well, because it has a high C, and the minute a tenor Here's about a high C panic. So um, at least that that was my take when 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 I when I was a professional tenor, and uh, you know uh, with the, with the, with the years and especially after my retirement, I I basically made peace with that high C figure that scares so many people. Now, uh, in terms of the of style, you know, this is French opera, uh, and French opera means that you know this this has to be elegant. You're gonna need tons and tons of line, and everything has to be sort of floaty, and uh, you know, it's just like this is bel canto in a way. You know, we're talking about Gounod, um, and uh, another characteristic that is, you know, uh, I wouldn't say. Um, extremely important, but you're going to notice is that the language itself is going to bring the voice ever so slightly forward. That doesn't mean that we're going to go for that mask uh, technique, you know, uh, a la Kraus, right? But we're going to take advantage of that language of French, which is a very sort of forward, almost nasal uh, language, and, and we're going to um, use it to our advantage. Um, in terms of uh, difficulty or, you know, challenge, uh, I don't see much of it, uh, you know, all the way until basically the last page, page and a half of the area. That's when we uh, basically take the reprise and we repeat, you know, the lay motif of the of the of the aria. You know, salut de la de pure. Again, now that has to be very very soft when we when we bring this back. Salut de la recherche de pure. Salut de la recherche de pure. Now, first note we have there is an F. Uh, we want that F to be open because obviously if we cover it, it's going to be extremely heavy. You're not a dramatic tenor. Here you're a lyric tenor with a floaty voice. If you cover that, it's going to be, uh, as the Italians say, for stile, right? So you're going to be out of, it's not going to be in the style. And um, it, it's, it's going to sound, um, yeah, as I said, it's not going to sound right in this context and it's going to be too heavy, yeah? Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking the advantage of the language of French to actually add some of that forward resonance, yeah? That's it, a bit forward, not nasal, but forward. Uh, uh, that's it, okay? Because if I were to open like I would do in Celestia Ida, it's not gonna work in this style. It's gonna sound horrible. I'm sorry, and that's why very many Italian tenors, although you know, and I love uh, Giuseppe Di Stefano, for example, and, and his rendition of this area is absolutely magnificent. But actually, he sang it in Italian. All right, then you can open and do that. That sort of very horizontal sound. Not here. You're gonna go vertical and you're gonna go forward. Okay. <laughs> Now, um, then you have uh, an A-flat. You're going to have two A-flats, and then you're going to have the high C. So, um, uh, où se devine la présence d'une âme innocente. Okay? D'une âme innocente. Again, how are you going to sing this uh, A-flat? Well, take it easy. It's, it's going to be covered, but it's not going to be extra covered. It's going to be, you know, uh, it's, it's already a dark vowel, 
du nom, ja, ja, du nom innocent, oh, no. so, du nom innocent, and again, uh, in that sort of covered yet semi-open sound, I'm gonna bring it forward, yeah, so I'm not gonna go, du nom innocent, that would be too heavy, and yeah, maybe uh, Kaufman and whoever, you know, maybe uh, that's it in such a way, but, you know, maybe you're not Kaufman, okay? Um, so that's the first day flat. Do not blast it, just float it and uh, wake up those forward resonances, okay? Then we have another one, uh, another A flat that, that is uh, salut, U, that U vowel. Okay, and this is quite, actually, this is an advantage because... Uh, at least, uh, you know, if you follow the, the Meloki sort of approach, when you have, a, let's say, a high note on an E sound, that's an I, yeah, an, an E, right, vowel, uh, you want to elongate that, that vowel. So it's a mixture between an E sound and an U sound. So this one is perfect. U, yeah? Yeah, so we're going to have an E flat. That's it. Yeah, we elongate that 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 uh, that e sound with an u vowel inside, and again we don't blast it. Yeah, uh, and finally we go to the high C. Once again, uh, this is not il trovatore. This is not uh, not even la bohème. This is not um William Tell, okay? This is Uno. So my take is when you approach this high C, think of it as a crescendo on it. Start it ever so slightly small and then grow it. Uh if you listen to recordings of this, you know, there are amazing recordings of this. Um, and Kraus, for example, sang a fantastic Faust, but um, uh, many other tenors did as well. I mean, Alanya sang a wonderful Faust as well, um, more recently. And uh, I mean, the list is, you know, uh, too long to actually name, name them all. But if you really want to sing it in, in the proper French style, I would take it, um, as, I, as I tell you, just as a crescendo, okay? Now, we have two options. One of them, yeah, one, one, of, one of, option number one would be to uh, do it in one breath. So we're going to go there. Some people like it this way because for them it's a bit less scary. Less scary because uh, they just go in one go, it's just one phrase and they get their C out of the way. Um, personally, what are the disadvantages of this? You're going to run out of breath. Or maybe you will not be able to hold that high C for uh, a long period of time less do a diminuendo on it, that that would be like remarkable, but uh, actually it's, it's not um, written, but uh, traditionally, you know, uh, some people, B. Stefano, for example, um, and many, many old fashioned tennis um, have done it that way. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, to do a diminuendo on a high C, okay? Um, but many, many tenors, they uh, divide the sentence in, in two. So, you know, où se devine, and then la présence. Okay. Typically, typically, you're going to find this one. So we're going to work ever so slightly with this. Now, these two notes... Yeah, that D and E flat are going to be obviously open and you're not going to pay much attention to it. Although this E flat 
is basically your trampoline towards that high C. So if you don't sort of, uh, it's not pressing, but if you don't think that this is like a step, bam, and from here you go up, maybe uh, you will not reach that C the, you know, the way you really want to. That's all, that's my take. Um, what about the high C itself? Well, that high C is going to be like an hourglass. We're gonna cover the sound and we're gonna open inside the cover. As I said, you know, the videos, you know, when you go uh, past that, that uh, B flat, it's an open sound, but it's inside the cover. So my take on, on, on this is I would take a proper breath, relax, take your time because, you know, as, we, as you see here, uh, ritenuto molto, okay? Right after the, the, the high C that has a pause on it. So I would just take a good breath, yeah? And that's it. And yes, you may say, okay, well, this guy has this experience for him is nothing. No, actually, it's something. I mean, uh, this is technique. This is one of the few moments if you are not uh, Juan Diego Flores in which you are going to have to think about what you're doing. And what you're doing is not blasting it and just do that hourglass and go with it. Okay, so that's my take on this uh, this cavatina. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to um, you know write them below. Um, get in touch with me. I'll be very happy to help. All right. Good luck and. Uh, uh, strength in these hard times that I know they're hard for everybody. Bye.